Yeah, Philemon. So there's only one chapter, right? So verse six, that the sharing of your faith may become effective uh, by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Um, so very um, you know, profound thought here. It says that the sharing of your faith, it becomes effective or uh, effectual or productive. How? It says by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. And which means that because of salvation, because of the fact that you are one spirit, that we are one spirit with him, uh, we are joined to the Lord. So when we acknowledge every good thing that we have in Christ Jesus, um, then the sharing of our, of our faith becomes effective. The uh, everything that we um, that we communicate, either through words, what we communicate, maybe through our lives, everything it becomes um, it becomes effective uh, when we when we actually acknowledge who we have become, acknowledge our true identity in Christ Jesus, right? So, so this is something for us to actively pursue, right? I know that this there could be you know a thought that okay, true humility is uh, just putting down ourselves over and over again, you know, lowering ourselves. Well, that is true. Humility is to uh, esteem ourselves rightly in the eyes of God. But we see that um, true humility is calling ourselves what God calls us or how we are known uh, through Christ, through uh, known through who we have become in Jesus, right? So uh, let's pray on those lines. You know, if the Lord would. Uh, point to us, show us some things that we need to acknowledge. You know, we have not yet fully acknowledged who we have become uh, in Christ Jesus. Maybe we can do that, right? Um, and bring to mind, okay, God, this is what I have in you because who I am in you and acknowledge that, right? Okay, let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the fact that, uh, Lord, in you we are more than conquerors. Lord, we thank you for the truth that in you, O oh God, we are sanctified, we are justified. Lord, we thank you that in you, O oh God, we have become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you that, um, Lord, our past, O oh God, is removed, O oh God, taken away. You have wiped it clean of all kinds of unrighteousness, Father God, and forgiven, O oh God, and given us a new, brand new start in life, Father God. And Master, we thank you for the work of your Spirit, Lord. We, we acknowledge, God, today, O oh God, even as we become aware of all these things, God, we acknowledge that that you are working in us, that your spirit indwells us, that you've released the gifts of the spirit, uh, Lord, in us, O oh God. Uh, we acknowledge all that, God, so that the sharing of our faith, God, the communication of our faith will become effective, O oh God. Yes, Lord, we pray that we may not be a hindrance to, Lord, the gospel message, but, Lord, that we would be effective, Lord, instruments, God, of righteousness, Lord, through you, Master. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So th this is something that we, you know, we can do every day as people who have been called to, you know, uh, commission to share Christ, commission to uh, facilitate people to an encounter with his power. You know, this is something that that's so basic, but it's something that we need to remember remind ourselves you know, who I am in Christ is who I really am, right? Okay, so last class we looked at uh, preparing a message, like right? what goes into preparing a message. And uh, so let's let's continue there. Um, yeah, so we looked at uh, the fact that God, the Holy Spirit draws out of us what is actually put in us, right? What has already been put in us. So uh, that is what he draws out. So it, it is our responsibility to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Right? It's our responsibility to intentionally study the word, meditate on the word. It's our responsibility to do all that, right? to sow to the Holy Spirit. Right? 
uh, not and not to sow to the flesh. So that when that happens, God draws that out. God, God you know, kind of prompts, pulls that out, and reminds us, you know, and because it's coming from a place of revelation, it's coming from a place of personal conviction, it's coming from a place of intimacy uh, with God as the vine and the branch, uh, like the Lord Jesus said, and it's also coming from a place of authority, right? Um, because from intimacy comes boldness, right? And we see any example of that? From intimacy comes boldness. Anything that you are reminded of, anything that you recall? The biblical uh, passage of the apostles. Yeah. There were uh, 12 of them. Now, it is only uh, others had that uh, zest and uh, the josh, the, you know, the uh like fire type of act i should do this for Jesus. i should do that for jesus yeah but if you look very closely it's only the apostle john mm. because he was too intimate with the lord mm. he always uh, resonated about you know his love for john rather than my love for jesus mm. so you always had that sense of boldness and uh thing even he was uh put in the mm. lake of thing not like that uh, of fire thing so there was nothing that was the sense of boldness that comes because of that much of intimacy mm. towards closeness. Yeah. So actually, uh, if you look at all the the twelve, uh, we see that except John, all all were martyred for Christ. So the kind of uh, boldness with which they preached and lived, uh, definitely from a place of uh, intimacy with the Lord. Right. So um, the the thing that we can look at is um, you know in the Book of Acts, where um, when they preach the gospel when they um you know when they when they spoke ministered with boldness that I, i'm referring to you know acts chapter 4 and verse 13 right acts chapter 4 and verse 13 um just before that they have been warned right? this is about peter and john they've been warned not to share the gospel they are actually shared the gospel they are standing before the sanhedrin the religious leaders of that day and this is the same Peter who, you know, who in the same setting, similar setting, before being filled with the Spirit of God, he actually, you know, denied the Lord. Same Peter, but Peter is there. And uh, he says, verse 12, there, there is salvation in no other name, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So he's just making it very bold, very plain. Uh, to the, all the religious leaders, that this is how salvation comes to man, right? Verse 13, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men. So they say they, these people have not been trained theologically in the scriptures, trained in the scriptures. They saw the boldness and, and look at the conclusion. They marveled and, re, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. So they marveled, they realized that they had been with Jesus. So it's talking about the fact that oh, they had a close walk with God, they had close, close walk with the Lord, a close relationship with the Lord. So that was the only thing. And they said they, they don't you know, understand or they don't know, they, they have not been trained. They're uneducated, untrained men. And then they, this conclusion is that they were with Jesus. So that was the only thing, only conclusion, right? So that is something that we see here. So the close link between boldness, uh, speaking in boldness, ministering in boldness, and the close walk with the Lord, intimacy with the Lord, yeah. Mm, the same uh, intimacy that the Father, uh, the, that the Lord had with the Father. Yes, so that communion is always there, and uh, and the, and with the Holy Spirit, um, and also, yeah, if we can say that, yes, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, so, so in ministering, we also need to understand the difference between the logos and the rhema. Okay, so what is the difference? Logos, rhema. Both refer to the word of God, right? But is 
logos is the written word it's uh, it could also be uh, you know a train of thought uh, which is there you know um, in the word of god uh, but when it comes to the rema is there anything specific okay it is the revealed word of god revealed word okay okay daniel says spoken word right okay so um if we were to look at a practical example we could we could look at it we could explain it this way uh, yes it is logos is the is the written word of god uh, the entire scriptures the written scriptures that we have is the logos um and what is you know emphasized for that particular season or that particular need um we could say that that is the rema right what is what the spirit of god emphasizes what the spirit of god highlights right for that time for that season um fresh word of god yes it is fresh um so what is emphasized by god for by by the lord by the spirit for that season for that time you know what we looked at the timely word right a word in season so how does it come about that is quickened by the holy spirit or prompted Uh, highlighted by the holy spirit so that we would call as the the rema word of god for example if you look at uh, uh, you know ephesians chapter 6 right ephesians 6 talks about the uh, the armor of god and um, let's look at that verse okay ephesians chapter 6 okay uh, uh, chapter 6 then uh, verse 17 right and take the salm uh, take take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god okay so that word which is used there is rema so um the sword of the spirit uh which is the word of god so he's saying use the sword of the spirit which means what the spirit of god is revealing to you at that moment at that time for that particular need you use it it is a weapon which means you meditate on it you confess it you declare it it is a weapon and it's a weapon designed to have impact in the spiritual realm use it because it is the rema of god yeah this situation can we see god for rema Like for every situation, situation that we go through in life or uh, for no for for every situation can we depend no? can we uh, see god i want a rema word from you can we see god yeah, for a rema for example many calendars have verses hmm. each day so is that also a form of rema or is it just that our uh, thing if it comes according to my situation then i apply it <laughs> yeah yes. some of those calendars and you know? <laughs> okay yeah so i mean we can't take that as a rema but the fact is that if the spirit of god highlights that to your heart for that situation for a challenge that you might be facing or even you know puts it in your heart to share with another person then it becomes a rema that's the thing yeah right so so the thing is uh, to know that distinction between um uh, you know yeah old testament prophecies from god yes um it's a revealed word of god uh, but rema of course is a greek word um in the new testament that we see that so um we see that uh, we need to know the difference simply because we can actually um lean on god um depend on the holy spirit for the rema okay so why is it right when we depend on the word of god depend on the holy spirit we can rep- depend rema is a word in season it's a timely word it's an appropriate word which comes for that particular need right it's also we can call as a quickened word right which means something that is quickened means something that is stirred up brought to life right it's not the word of god is dead but it's you know it's highlighted it's 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 brought alive for that situation right so it it's also like you know we said we, it's a prophetic word the inspired word of god which is spoken forth or which is acted upon it's a prophetic word of god right so we we need to depend on we need to lean on the holy spirit depend on the holy spirit for the rema 
word of god right so so we can ask you know right right from the okay what is the topic what is the title you know what is it that you want us to dwell on we can ask we can you know we can depend on god right um as much as the logos talks about the principle uh we need to you know lean on god you know the principles of god the 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 principles the precepts that we see in the word very important right so that doesn't mean that we just forego that it's very important that's the next thing that we're going to look at right we need to study the word so that is very important but the principle without the without the presence of god or the presence of god uh the holy spirit when he quickens it becomes sharper it becomes appropriate it finds its mark right it finds its target uh for that particular for that particular time now that is why we lean on god to um to give us the rema to give us that fresh word right okay so but it is our responsibility to study the word of god right to read through to study the word of god um the pro you know in proverbs also we see this scripture that the preparations of the heart belong to man the preparations of the heart belong to man which means that you know studying you know positioning ourselves emotionally uh, spiritually all that the preparation belongs to man but the answer of the tongue comes from the lord that's what proverbs says so um this is something that um, that we can do uh, so we need to study we need to study the word of god okay um what also helps is to have a single topic of a single theme okay this is more uh, in terms of from the perspective of the person who's receiving it right if you're sharing it's it's good to have a single topic or a single theme so that it is received with clarity right um and so it's it's good to do that when you're sharing something okay today's message is about this so it could have subtopics it could have you know several subtopics uh, that's fine but then it has if it's one theme then it stays with the person right rather than two differing you know completely different themes uh it is good to have one main theme right uh we're going to look at sermon you know when we look at sermon preparation topic title illustrations we're going to look at that in detail but um we need to understand that uh, illustrations of real life examples use it cautiously that um, not all of personal experiences uh maybe god's best right because we can we can go through stuff and we can attribute to god wrongly right for example uh one person uh was talking like this he said uh, okay um you know i some some people threaten okay so this guy is saying you know he was walking down some people threaten some i think uh, people in his neighborhood they threatened him and then he went on to say you know the next day he heard that both of both those guys who threatened him had an accident okay had an accident and then a lot of injuries the bike and all was damaged and so on and so he went on to say that i'm i know my god will not you know let go of me and i know my god cost wanted to teach them a lesson and therefore he taught them a lesson etc so now we can't come to that conclusion right it may be something that they did it may be something that some foolishness on their part some you know some uh, whatever uh and i'm not ruling out that the fact that okay there was vindication divine vindication whatever but the fact is we can't come to such conclusions when we are using our you know human experiences life experiences as illustrations you know what are, what is an illustration question uh no generally what does an illustration mean what does it mean to illustrate something describe it okay uh somebody said something um online incidents that have happened incidents things that have happened okay okay to illustrate means to draw actually illustration is a picture right when we say it is an illustration it's actually a picture which means it's a uh something that 
that is pictorially depicted right um so when we use it uh, when we say okay here is something to illustrate this truth that means that it's like a picture that gives clarity it's like a picture that shows uh you know more uh, in, in detail describes the the truth or concept or something that we are trying to uh teach or something that we are trying to explain right so maybe we we could talk about you know speaking the truth uh speaking the truth in love so we could maybe share a story or maybe a bible story or uh, our own life example to illustrate it which means to even describe it even more clearer right like the lord used parables to illustrate some truths right the parable of the lost coin lost sheep lost son prodigal son what was the truth that he was illustrating no god's heart right god's heart for the lost right if you look at it that is what he was illustrating this is god's heart for the lost because they asked the question you know why are why are you fellowshipping with sinners so this was god's heart for the lost so the lost going after the lost so he illustrated that truth he described that truth explained the truth with these earthly stories right he uses parables to illustrate so um so when it comes to illustrations we need to use it cautiously we need to use it wisely because not everything we go through maybe because god ordained it right we could have made our own decision irrespective of god leading right we could have done it because of our own mistake it could have happened because of other people's mistake whatever right so we need to use it cautiously we need to be sure right if it's appropriate and we need to use it so so we are looking at some thoughts when it comes to sermon preparation right minister at the spiritual level of your audience now this is very very important okay so you know if you look at um, uh, those uh, scripture verses 1 corinthians 2 and verses 1 to 7 <clears throat> okay paul says and i brethren when i came to you did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom declaring to you the testimony of god for i determined not to know anything among you except Christ Jesus Jesus Christ and him crucified i was with you in uh, weakness in fear and in much trembling and my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men but in the power of god right? uh, therefore we speak wisdom among those who are mature yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing but we speak the wisdom of god in a mystery the hidden wisdom which god ordained before the ages for our glory okay so what is paul saying paul saying that uh, from this we understand that um, you know what we determine not to know anything among you except jesus christ and him crucified he says your faith should not be in the wisdom of man but in the wisdom of god in the power of god sorry so he said you know this is intentionally we ministered like this paul also goes on to say verse chapter 3 if you look at it chapter 3 i fed you with milk and not with solid food for until now you were not able to receive it and even now you are still not able okay so something that we understand is that prayerfully consider the spiritual maturity of the audience the level of the audience right what is it so we need to discern it through prayer we need to we can even use our you know human wisdom and for example you come to know through just talking to people that okay they are all young believers new believers right so accordingly you can take a topic and teach right what is the next step right maybe character maybe you know uh, integrity maybe things like baptism etc water baptism like they are all new they are all new believers and suppose there are mature believers then that also prayerfully you consider what is it that you are going to teach now these are mature believers they are you know they are capable of receiving solid food right so you minister at the spiritual level of your audience now 
Now the 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 challenge is and the difficulty is that cert when when we look at the church, you have people in differing levels of maturity, right? So you can never pinpoint and say, okay, God, I think this is what it is. You can you you have people with different. You know, we have new believers. We have you know uh, people who are experienced, who are there for ages. So all that is there in you know. But you understand as a church. As a as a body of believers, what have they journeyed into? Okay, uh, that is something that we can understand. That is something that we can ask God. You know, as a church, what is it that they've been learning? What is it that they've been, um, you know, they've been growing in? What is it that the church has been ministering? You know, or the church leadership has been teaching intentionally, ministering. So. Once we understand that, we know that okay, the church is in that this kind of spiritual, um, you know, maturity. So we can teach them this, right? Right. So these are some thoughts for us to, uh, you know, when we consider preparing a message, we will look at it in detail. Okay. Now, just like how we studied, how we saw that there are different ways of studying the Word of God, there are different kinds of sermons as well. Okay, different kind of messages that we can preach. Um, let's look at uh, some of them, right? So the first one that we're going to look at is called a topical sermon. Okay, so that means by definition, this sermon is going to be, is based on a topic. The main points of the sermon are from a topic, right? So which means that. Uh, the divisions, subdivisions, or the main points in a sermon are all flowing from the topic. Yeah. So, um, so what is it? You know, an, an example of a topical sermon. Just give any topic. Can share any topic that we can consider for a sermon. Oh, yes, Abu. So, okay. So, any topic, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Huh? Everlasting love. Okay, so which is um, that is a, that is more like a title, right? So maybe the love of God, okay, uh, the nature of God's love, that would be a you know, that could be a topic, right? So, so the entire sermon is going to be based on this topic. Suddenly, you're not going to talk about you know, something else, right? All the main points, all the sub points. Everything is going to be based flowing from this topic. So that is what we mean when we say a topical sermon. Okay, so it's simple, right? So uh, a topical sermon, it's a, it's a great way to um, preach God's word. Uh, and uh, sorry, uh, it could it could be in our topics uh, like we said, the love of God. It could be some some examples that are in your notes. Also, you can consider uh, reasons for unanswered prayer. Right, uh, etc. And so it could have five points, six points, ten points, whatever. Right, whatever is required to kind of give a study of that particular topic, a completion. Also, it is also you know the points could be based on what time that you have, right? What duration that you have to share the message. You know, sometimes it could be uh, just an exhortation. It could be just about maybe. You have about 10 minutes. And so you decide what is it. In that 10 minutes, maybe you can just talk about two points, maybe, or three points. And what are those main things that you want to talk about when it comes to the love of God, right? So uh, things like that. So um, all uh, all the points, you now this is, this is one thing that we need to consider. And also we need to be, uh, I think we looked at it earlier also, ministering the word of God. All the points when we minister have to have a scriptural backing. Okay, that's important, right? We looked at you know how we are called to minister the word of God, right? We said, okay, why are we going to have word of God as the content of the content of the message? Because word of God is powerful. 
the word of god has transformed me to power the word of god god you know acts based on his word right he he confirms his word right so he gives evidence and proof that it is his word right so for all these reasons we need to make the content uh, as the word of god right so whatever we are sharing whatever points we might be sharing maybe there are five things we need to make the reference for that as the word of god so it it means that it is based on the word of god whatever you're saying is based on the word of god there is evidence for what you're saying there is evidence in the bible in the word which means it's not just a opinion it's not just a popular thing that you're sharing it is based on the word of god right so every point that you share um, now the thing is it might not have you know it might not be there in the verse that you might not have a scripture uh, you know word for word that's fine right you may not have a scripture that is you know just exactly verbatim stating that point that is fine but the truth of it the the gist of that message should be based on that that uh, particular scripture right for example you know uh, if if uh, we're talking about the characteristics of the peace that we have there's an example in your notes you can follow through also um, page 28 right so when you're talking about the characteristics of our peace peace with god romans 5:1 talks about that the peace of god philippians 4 how it guards our hearts and minds through christ jesus peace through peace through christ's word john 16 verse 33 right so and christ the kind of peace that he had the kind of peace that he gives john 14:27 right so and we have the god kind of or god of peace with us philippians 4:9 so so like this so we may not find you know verbatim this point the or this line in the scripture but we know that the truth of that is there in all these references okay so we base it now this is a, this is an important thing because we might be tempted to share something hey, this is a great idea and we might be tempted to share that or this is a you know sometimes we we share some practical things right practical aspects some some truth some wisdom some experience whatever it's okay but we need to make that distinction you can't preach it as if hey, the word of god says this so that's the thing right? you make the distinction now this is what practical wisdom is we know that there is no chapter and verse but this is practical wisdom this is beneficial this is useful this is helpful right we need to make that distinction because um otherwise um it can it you know it can it can create confusion in people's minds you know? um so they think okay this is the word of god because sometimes we teach culture or man's tradition as the word of god and uh, that's a wrong thing to do right okay so um okay so when we so that is the um you know the uh, topical sermon okay the next one that we see is what we can call as the textual sermon okay something that is from a text so uh, when we say a textual sermon we're saying we take a portion of scripture or a verse from scripture okay so we take that verse or maybe as a group of verses and um, all the points from the sermon are derived from this verse right you're explaining that verse you're explaining that maybe two or three verses you're explaining that you're describing that you're studying that so a textual sermon is from that alone right now there could be other verses to substantiate which means to add even more strength even more evidence to those points right maybe the first point yeah you know let's say for example if you're taking um john 316 right as the textual sermon okay john 316 god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life right so we might have two or three points based on that right now each of those points which are describing john 316 when you're talking about okay god so loved now how did he love we could use other scripture like 1 corinthians 13 this is the love of god 
okay so we, we might use you know the love of this is agape the unconditional god kind of love and that's the kind of love with which he loved you loved you and i right so while so so that what is the difference between topical sermon and textual sermon topic is based on you know like the like the sermon itself says it's based on a topic it's based on a theme whereas here the topic and the theme is derived from the scripture verse okay so in, in other words in simple terms we are using that scripture we are describing or the sermon is about that scripture verse or about the group of scripture verses right so it's a textual sermon okay um okay right any any doubts yeah so that is what so there is one text that you are basing your sermon on right for example it could be um, you know like for example the the example that we quoted john 316 now that is the text for the entire sermon which means that um, the conf- the boundaries of what you are discussing is 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 around that Right. and so there could be whatever let's say five points you have to substantiate that text so the each of those points could draw from other scriptures that is fine right that is okay but the, uh, typically a textual sermon uh, would be would be based on that i think but we we can always you know uh, draw from how god loves and how god is love from one john you could draw from you know from other places one corinthians 13 and all that um yeah 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 i can use the mic yeah uh, if if you are led to uh, prepare for a sermon um, in your personal experience when you uh, prepared or preparing for a sermon the holy spirit will have like get you or guided you towards a particular passage yeah. or a topic right. anything or the theme in the church yeah. in that way you will go but have you ever felt a prompting within you that uh, to not uh, the other way around you know not to take this passage not to take for example mm. have you felt that so that uh, yeah yeah it's so it happened both ways like uh, the, the, the same way the spirit of god ministers to okay to take something and share the same way the spirit of god will also tell you to avoid something because maybe you know like over a period of time uh, you would have shared on you know several topics and you know okay this this maybe this message i can share uh and then you don't feel the peace of god you know there's no there's no prompting of god uh, about that particular thing so it's better not to force it it's better to drop it so it, yes it works both ways yeah yeah okay so um we looked at um, topical we looked at textual and uh, so the third thing that we see is the expository sermon so now expository sermon is where we look at a extended portion of scripture or it could be a book study right it could be that so in an in a portion of scripture let's say if you're looking at um, uh like 1 corinthians 12 13 14 if we take all those three chapters together we know there is one common thread one common theme through that what is it 1 corinthians 12 13 14 sorry uh no no if you look at 12 13 is on love yes but if you look at 12 you look at 13 if you look at 14 what does it talk about yeah so so he starts by saying now concerning spiritual gifts i do not want you to be ignorant brethren and then goes on you know to write about that um maybe we can switch off this fan yeah it's okay it's okay so he then begins to write about that or goes all the way to chapter 14 and uh, at the end of it he says you know let all things be done decently and in order uh and then chapter 15 is about something else right so when we do an expository uh, sermon so it's it could be this kind of a portion of scripture where it could be one theme um like this gives 
but also we we could see that it could be a series of different uh, themes right there's one main theme but he's also talking about informing about how gifts are to be used how gifts should not be abused uh, and some specifics of like prophecy specifics of gifts of tongues uh, and so on right so uh, so all that uh, is, is addressed in uh, these three chapters right so uh, it could be that so we need to be uh, open and aware to that suppose we're doing a book study for example right we do a book study on you know maybe one of those shorter books and we smaller books you know in in content and we do that now there it could be multiple themes right when you do a book study it's multiple themes but um now that also is fine right it's an expository sermon you um you, sh you go into the details of it you share the context of it and uh, uh, everything the points for the sermon come from the passage just like how you considered the text scripture text and the points of those sermon come came from the text the same way the points from the sermon come from the 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 portion of scripture that you're considering okay um okay some examples in the notes you can go through that uh, how expository sermons are now so, uh, some basic difference between a textual sermon and an expository sermon um we just need to understand you know right uh, so when is a textual sermon it's it's usually maybe a couple of verses maybe just one verse okay so the portion of scripture is extended when it comes to an expository okay uh, expository sermon so expository meaning it's just uh, you know throwing light on various things right it's explaining in detail so um, so that's that's what is it uh, that's what it means right so um, the basic difference would be in uh, in terms of the um uh, in in terms of the the scripture um length of scripture that we are considering right so expository means to just means to explain or describe something right okay. so now um that is one one uh, difference that we see right um one main difference um but when it comes to uh, the textual sermon the points from the uh, from that scripture text itself from the verse itself uh, all the points are taken from that scripture text all the points in the sermon are taken from that one or two verses okay whereas when it comes to an expository sermon right um it comes from that chunk of scripture now not all verses of the scripture could be addressed in the sermon there will be something that you might highlight something that you might uh, you know you might even not emphasize right so but that is what we call as a textual sermon so sorry as an expository sermon so in, in an expository sermon you're going line by line you're going verse by verse and you're considering an an explanation of that uh and a, and a book study is a very good example of that so uh there could be many points of emphasis like right? there could be many points and it may not be connected to one theme okay there could be many many points many uh many themes even when we do expository sermons right for so but then it results in a good thing it results in a congregation in a in a in a audience that is biblically well taught well read okay so over a period of time if you are teaching you know uh, you know the congregation you are teaching from certain books maybe you've done you know 1 corinthians maybe you've done 2 corinthians so it results in a congregation that that is biblically well read and well taught okay rather than just one textual sermon or one topical sermon if you do an expository sermon they know from that entire epistle maybe you're doing epistles you know uh, maybe you cho choose a few epistles every year and you're just teaching that group of people you know over and over again uh, this maybe this year you can look at 
two or three episodes next year you look at you know two or three episodes and you take time to read through and 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 teach and uh, you're sharing this the congregation becomes well read well taught well informed and grounded in scripture right so it results in that so there is a lot of benefit when there is a when you when you have the time to do an expository sermon okay um but the thing is this people need to pay attention people should not lose interest right initially everybody is like oh yeah, wonderful you now we are going to learn about this book but then you slowly go through it and then verse by verse and you see that hey, you know <laughs> maybe you know uh, i need one one solid inspiring message motivational talk you know some you feel like that and because it may not you know the holy spirit will speak the holy spirit will will speak but it's not like a you know it's not like an inspirational word like a topical sermon or even like a uh, uh, you know like a textual sermon right so it's an intentional well planned study right and within that i'm sure that the holy spirit will highlight certain things certain needs will be taken care of certain you know certain things uh, you know corrections could happen right all that could happen within that as we journey through that uh, you know that passage or book right all that could happen okay so so three main uh, you know uh, sermons or types of sermons one is the topical sermon second one the text textual sermon the third one is the expository sermon okay so next class when we when we meet we'll talk about the mechanics of sermon construction okay like title choosing a title choose, choosing a um, Uh, illustration etc right okay. thank you we'll stop here god bless